So, for the hand pieces that we have here, we have a neat selection. Starting from this hat that we're gonna talk about, which is going to be our slow speed and our attachments right here. First, starting off with our slow speed motor. It's gonna be this whole long piece that's going to be the driving train of our hand pieces. Not the high speed one, which is going to go and cut and take apart your tooth, but it's gonna be the slower one, which is responsible for polishing, light decay removal, and laboratory duties. On our slow speed motor, apart from it just being this whole jig, some things that we wanna take notice on is going to be this slip-on space, which is going to accommodate our other attachments like I have right here, which will just easily just slip on, and you may even hear a click. And to remove it, another piece that you can find that's important about our slow speed motor is that we're gonna have potentially this ring at the bottom, which is responsible for its rotational direction, whether in its normal cutting direction or in a reverse fashion. The way that we'd go about that is just go and twisting this ring at the bottom. And you may even have a little part on this that might be F for forward and R for reverse. Just go ahead and play around with it, but usually it's going to be in that forward motion. Another part that you might have interested in is also this little port right here. This is nice because it's going to be a little waterline hookup in case you have anything that goes off of the top, such as this little one right here, that may accompany a little hose to shoot water because with our slow speed hand pieces, generally they do not come with the ability to spray water for cooling the tooth. Maybe for certain things you might have this port. At the bottom of this slow speed motor is going to be some ports and you are going to commonly find these ports on a lot of different hand pieces, but what do each one do? With the different ports that we have, you're gonna have potentially a larger one, a medium size, and potentially two little ones that are over here on the side. The larger one being your air exhaust, the middle one is going to be your air intake, and the two small nozzles over here at the lower end, if you have it, is going to be for your water intake. When it comes to the slow speed motor, we have attachments that we have on this left and right section right here, and they both perform different duties. Let's go over their names. Starting with this little guy, this one's gonna have a couple of names. This could be known as a contra angle, a right angle, or a latch type because of this special little latch mechanism that we have on the back, which could also be replaced with a PB or a push button to be able to insert burrs and remove. The action of putting a burr in here all relies on this latch or push button that may be in the rear. When you have this latch and push button in the rear, latch open, ready to accept a burr, but the burr does not come through here to find its bind, we are gonna go in reverse to its actual nozzle. You're looking for a burr that has a notch in the end, just like I have here. And with that, once I go and insert it, a common thing is that you may not go and insert it completely, and it may be riding up a little bit. At which point, you can go and slowly turn until it drops into place, and then you go and take your latch here and lock it down making it so that you can't pull this out without unlatching it first. The other attachment that we have here is going to be this little bit. With this attachment, this is going to be known by a couple of its names are gonna be a straight attachment, a nose cone, or a laboratory attachment. And all these feed onto our slow speed motor, just like we had from before when we go and slip them on so they mate together. With our nose code attachment, as I'm gonna be calling it from here on, the way that we go and slip a burr into here is different from our latch type mechanism. With that, you're going to have potentially, or unintentionally, a ring or a separating portion right here where I can go and pinch above, pinch below, and give them a firm twist. What you're waiting for is for it to unlock, slip, and open. And you may even hear it here. With our nose cone open, all we have to do is go and pick up any of our burrs that we can select for it. All of them, which I have right here, is a laboratory burr. We can go and slip it through the top where it should fall all the way down, and we can go and do the reverse to lock it up. And now we got our attachment. It doesn't come loose, spins freely, and now we can go and slip this on for what we we're gonna do. Another thing that can happen for these is that instead of using it for a laboratory burr purpose is looking at this keyhole that we have right over here. Might be a little hard to see. I can take one of these profi angles that I have right here, and you can see that it has a little cutout right above my, where my finger is. I could take these, slip them together where they'll mate, and I lock it up instead. Make sure that it's nicely stabilized by trying to give it a little tug, and it should spin without any issues. And this is good for any potential dental assistant, or in your state, your higher order, to be able to polish a patient's teeth after a simple or routine cleaning has been performed. When it comes to either of these attachments, when we go and do our maintenance on them, it requires a little bit of finesse because we don't have those four ports like we had before. They just have this long porthole at the bottom that's just gonna be a single slip in. And you may have a certain attachment next to a spray that you can go and insert into this piece and perform your maintenance duties. A little bit of a special cleaning mechanism when it comes to our right angle attachment that we have here is with our collar unlocked, I can go and loosen up this collar 
And when I go and pull it out, there's gonna be a couple bits that follow with it. Starting is going to be, for one, the head coming off. You're gonna have this gear that's gonna be inside and then a port inside here, making sure that every one of these is clean, oiled, and maintained. Uh, when I insert it, it's going to be the short shaft of this gear teeth into the bottom, long shaft of the gear teeth into the head, and make sure when you're putting it all together, when we do our right angles, that they're not pointing in an odd direction. So pay attention to how it was assembled before, put it in working order, as we have so. One of the last ones that are commonly used in our field is going to be a high-speed handpiece, but this is only going to be operated by DOC intraorally. From that, it's going to have a long unibody design where it is going to just be one piece that takes the ports that we went over earlier, attached into our handpiece hose, and on the top where it goes and holds a burr, it's going to be a push button action, which if I take one of these burrs that I have in my hand, if I push the button on the back and hold it down tight, I should be able to go and slip this in all the way down and release the button. Make sure to always give it a tug to be sure that it is secured. A common thing for new assistants when they're going and setting these up or removing burrs is that they're not putting enough pressure. If they just go and use the big pad of their thumb, they're not going to get enough bony pressure on that push button to be able to make the teeth release. But if they use the edge of their thumb and enough pressure to make their tissue blanch like it has on my thumbnail, that should be able to have that button release and out goes the burr. Specifically with our high speed hand pieces, these are going to be used to go and remove decay, cut teeth, prepare teeth, adjust crowns and occlusions, and much more that your doctor may even find from there. With a high speed hand piece, this is only going to be operated by our doc. Sometimes your assistants may use it when they're trimming their crowns for a temporary crown placement, but never on a patient. This is specifically doc's weapon of choice. And when we're coming to our hand pieces, we have a selection sometimes to make depending on your unit. Right now, I have two available hoses to be able to attach this to. Whether one is specifically for a high speed or one's for a low speed or anything, that's your time to go and assess. But if I go and take my high speed hand piece that I have here, I can go ahead and take my hose that we have right here, usually consisting of a collar that will go up and down and a type of porthole that's going to match the ports on this. I'm just gonna go ahead and mesh it up together pull up my collar and twist. With this, this should be easy to be able to twist with just simple finger pressure and until you finally hit a bind where it's all connected right here at the top, go ahead and hit your rheostat and get ready and give it a spin. Another piece that comes to this is that the water that comes out of our high-speed hand pieces can be turned off by a rheostat where there's a switch at the bottom. Another thing that can be a troubleshooting item to this is going to be when I go and pick up my high-speed hand piece and give it a little bit of a step, there's nothing coming out of here, but for some reason my neighboring hose right here is shooting off. That seems weird. Well, the only thing that's happening is that this has actually been in the wrong cradle for who knows how long. So at that point, if I just go and lift and return this to its correct cradle, give it a spin again. Now we got movement. Another troubleshooting thing that you can find, depending on your unit, is going to be the master switch, making sure that there's actual air pressure to our whole piece, which sometimes you can find right over at the side. For this unit, that's gonna be this master switch. Whether it's facing to the one, meaning on, or the O, meaning off, that's going to influence the hiss that you'll hear once you go and flip it. That means it's depressurized. That's gaining pressure so that we can go and use our handpiece the right way. Another issue that can be causing you to have no water is that your water system is empty from the bottle. And if we go and follow the arm, go and pull this up and follow my way over here, we can go and see so if it's empty. Sometimes you can give it a little love tap and see if you feel that emptiness or just give it a gentle little shake. Right now, my water is at this level, so time for a replacement. When you go and take this apart, you want to go and turn off the master switch or else you're going to hear an annoying hiss the whole time, such as this and it won't stop going, and it's gonna sound like the summoning of demons coming from the underworld if you don't turn off that master, which, let's go ahead and do that, so, there it goes, demons unsummoned. Revert, uh, turning it in a clockwise motion, pulling it off from, uh, pulling it out from the straw, don't touch the straw, and get this filled with the appropriate water source. When we go and attach this back, I'm gonna go and float the straw right into here, sit it all the way up, twist it, twist it, twist it, and power on my unit. Which, if you're hearing those demons being summoned again, go ahead, make sure it's fully tightened on. Another important piece is gonna be our rheostat. With this, this is our foot pedal to control the airflow through our handpiece so that we can make it go vroom vroom. So, a lot of times whenever we go and hit on that, you'll hear a little hiss. 
That's just saying at the moment that it's trying to force air to our handpiece, but there's a no-go because our handpieces are not off of our cradle. But another piece from this is gonna be this water switch that's over here off on the side, which could enjoy a small little side swipe of our foot to get to face towards the water, which is gonna be that blue dot, or a way to turn off of the water. If you find that your office has this little switch broken, it's not too difficult to be able to fix. And hey, stick around. Maybe I'll do a repair video on how to do that. Pretty easy and simple. And that's everything to know about these hand pieces. No matter what horrors they may give you as far as spine tingling sensations, at least you know that dental things got you covered on the know-how and why we have to do this. In the meantime, I'll go hit this patient up with this high speed, give him the chills. All right, apart from that, take it easy.